who Nick Lachey is from my hometown. Is he really? Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah, he's a. All right, big Cincinnati guy. You want to do this? Yeah, let's do it. Let's get going. All right, let's do the fucking thing. Okay, yeah. There you go. Five, four, three, two, one. Welcome Welcome to to another another episode episode of Huff and Brown. Well, no Dale today. No Dale again. What's Dale? No, no. You know what? No, he's a real nice guy. I like Dale. Dale is sweetheart. Dale is a sweetheart. I wish you could be here to hear about all the nice things we're saying about him right now. We'll, we'll cut this out later. Hopefully, he'll <laughs> listen to the podcast. He's a part of eh, seventy percent of the time. Only seventy? I don't get eh, that much. Maybe at this ratio, you know. Hmm. Eh, boy, I think he's going to be bumped down to about sixty percent now. Mm. Well, you know what? I'm going to say, dude. Me and Dale we moved into a new place this weekend, and it was it was a hassle, but. You know, I'm here. Didn't you move into a house that uh, was infected with those bugs from Men in Black 1? Oh, yeah, yeah that's yeah, right. Yeah. We, what we, are they called? Cockroaches? Oh, yeah, and uh, fleas. Oh, the other thing. That's why you boys had to stop at fucking PetSmart and pick up some flea collars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's why I'm wearing this right now. <laughs> it, it, I mean, it's good look, though. It complements those glasses yeah, really nicely. thank you. You can have your two cap. You got to protect your eyes. You got to protect the rest of your body yep. with this flea yeah. collar I got on right now. Dude, you're looking like a soy boy today. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> Straight soy boy you know, look, look today. Barista, dude. <laughs> Yeah, you look like you're working on your concept pop album. <laughs> yeah, you look like you're trying to make album art out of fucking like latte foam, dude. What I do is for my new album, I break mirrors or glass and I stare at it for about half an hour and then the songs just come to me. <laughs> oh my Spoken God. like every guy that lives in East Nashville, yeah. pretty much. Yeah, I live in East Nashville again, so I got to start saying shit like that. Thanks again. to Dale. What a nice guy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so. Uh, the random voice today. Why don't you go on and introduce yourself? What's going on? Well, gentlemen, first of all, let me say thank you for having me. Thanks it's a pleasure. pleasure. Dude. And an honor and a privilege, I might add. Uh, Nick Trucks, originally from Southern California. I've been out in uh, Middle Tennessee since uh, early 2013. Yeah, so he's a, a SoCal wuss bag like Tony Hawk. Yeah. Hey, sir. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus is at, you know, is up here. Tony Hawk... Half step behind them. Okay, they're they're one and the same. I could agree with that. The first guy who to land a nine hundred on the half pipe. I remember that. I remember seeing that. that. Not everybody's doing that. That's some full send, bro. That's some full send right there. And people may have topped that in this day and age, but he was a fucking pioneer, dude. He was and Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Probably my favorite video game of all time. Dude, that that nine hundred was so hard to hit on that game. That was hard trick to do. Hardest one in the game. Easy. My favorite was the Christ there though. Remember that one? That was the best. You throw it out. Yep. That he was mm-hmm. imitating his lookalike, his his likeness, mm-hmm. I guess. Yeah, I don't think Tony could do the Christ there. I think that was another dude that only did the Christ there. Maybe it, maybe that was Bob Burnquist. I think it was probably, Bucky Lassick in that oh, game. Yeah, I mean, Bucky, Bucky Lassick, dude. dude. So, dude, somebody good. Remember Kareem Campbell, dude? He was the only black guy in the game. Oh yeah, yeah. Back they, when like black people weren't allowed to skateboard, they weren't or allowed. Yeah, yeah. They, they weren't were in fishing games. Yeah, some remnants yeah. of Jim Crow back then. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm pretty oh, sure yeah. they prevented black guys from skating. Unfortunately. Yeah, I think it all stemmed from an incident in Dog Pound, but I may be misinformed. <laughs> I think I watched a movie like that one time. <laughs> yeah. Man, I kind of, I used to fantasize about growing up in Southern California and being like, skateboarder, dude. Like, we're, dude, there's an empty pool over on Elm Street. Dude, dude, let's go fucking hit it. It's not that great, man. I'm no, telling you. It's, I, no. the, this romanticized ideal of growing up in Southern California it does, just does not exist. I mean, what, 2019, every country music artist is, has some line about, Southern California, every movie focuses on, oh, the cool hip. This guy's from California saying, so no, he might be cool. It's California. It's whack. Maybe it's yeah, just growing it up in the Midwest where you're like, it's so boring. You're like, oh, Dude, I, I like you're... the Midwest, man. People are cool out here. I like the Midwest. I mean, we're technically in the South this right now, but South. I'll be moving to the Midwest. Yeah. Yeah. So, you got like a real sense of community out in this part of the country. That's true. In Southern California, everyone like, I don't give a shit. Yeah. We'll care about you if your house burns down in a wildfire or if the earthquake hits. When you, and we're all fucked. When you lived in Southern California, was it more of a like suburban area or were you in like more no like, it, was, it was pretty middle class it was a uh, you know middle class suburbs it was suburbs yeah. they weren't like in the are there any kind of like country out there you know what i mean the only like quote unquote country that you'd get is uh like kind of where i grew up was a little bit inland so we were more kind of deserty like hill desert environment okay. um but that's as close to the country, unless you go out to like Bakersfield or Fresno or Stockton. Um, 
unless you go like super east in California, then it turns into a lot of country. But uh, no, a lot of bobcats where I grew up. Uh, bobcats, ma- mountain lions. Dude, dude, dude bro. Fuck that, bro. Dude, be careful. That's that. Dude, be people caring. that go like hiking out there and stuff, and you hear those horror stories oh, about yeah. mountain lions tackling them out of nowhere. Yeah, like, they get mauled by like four sickly bobcats. That dude, that'd be the worst the way to die. That'd be the worst way to go. Just get, oh, watching get, yourself get just, eaten. And you can't even carry a gun. I just forgot. It's I fucking know. California, dude. dude. Carry you carry bow, some yeah. fucking mace, yeah. dude. But carry a muzzle loader, dude. To a rabies infected bobcat. It's just going to, oh, now I'm mad. Now I'm going to eat you butthole first. Yeah. Yeah. Like, God. what's that gonna do? It's just gonna, like gonna blink twice and then eat your face off. Yeah, yeah. be like, oh, well, that was that pissed me off. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. They don't like, even have the decency to wait till you're dead to eat you. Too. Yeah. yeah, the level of disrespect in the animal kingdom is just bar none. Oh yeah, it's they don't insane. Give a fuck, dude. I was just gonna punch you in the heart really quick and put you out quick, but now I'm gonna eat you from yeah. your legs up. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm gonna disable you and then eat you. Me and my three bobcat brother, mountain lion brothers. What would be the uh, worst way to go? Pack of bobcats or like three tiger sharks? You think? Ooh, bobcats! I think tiger sharks. You're gonna be cut. If th- if tiger sharks are just going at you, you're gonna be you're gonna be night night quick. The yeah, bobcats yeah. might play with you a little bit. Yeah. Why would you want bobcats? And I'd rather. If- no, that's what I'm saying. I'm I'm going with the shark. Oh yeah, me too. Shit, I think I'd have to go bobcat because at least with a bobcat, you're still on land. Like humans are built to walk on land. We're not built to swim. Yeah. Right. Sharks I mean, with out, the exception like, of Michael Whoa. Phelps. It's like you're already out of your natural environment. Yeah, but he's not doing shit against a shark. Oh, well, no. But I'm saying, like, he can swim better than all, yeah. all of us combined At your can. best, you're still yeah. not even yeah. close. And I hear drowning is easily one of the worst ways to die. Yeah. I heard it was one of the best, dude. Really? Yeah, dude. I heard different. I, I, huh. I thought, like, you, like, spit up your lungs or something like that. Like, like there's, you, like, die in, like, three different ways until you actually die. You start suffocating, you're choking, and then once you, like, have to inhale and you take all that water in... Then that like floods your body, so now you're even even more dead. And then, but that still doesn't kill you all the way. And then like you, and then the last thing happens, which I th- someone said you like spit up something, and you're ugh, I don't know. Yeah, that'd be pretty awful. Yeah, I feel mainly because like I have a fear of drowning though too. So I feel like you pass out. Yeah, probably, <laughs> maybe, hopefully, unless you're in like you know chest deep water. And the sharks come in, and then like you know like you're the buoyancy, like you're you're kind of like. You can barely touch the ground, but not really. Yeah, like when you're the wave comes, like, you're not touching. I'm just sharks hel- are you're just helpless. Yeah. That's my biggest fear is falling off a cruise ship, like in the middle of the night. Oof. No one's around and you just slip and you fall off and then you're just like floating there in the water and like bye bye cruise ship, nothing I can yeah. do. And you just like, you float there and wait to die. Kind of like that movie uh, Open Water. Yeah. Yeah, that movie's terrifying. Dude. Mainly because it's based on a true story too. Those that company that left those two people. Oh god. Left him out there. Well, How do you not right. do a head count? You know, like I think it was their fault though. They're were, they were like, let's go down here. Yeah. We're not supposed to go down here, but let's go down here. And they're like, all right, we're out of here. And they came back up, like, where's the boat? Fuck and get eaten by that. sharks. Yeah, that's how that movie ends. Yeah, yeah, they both they die. Go, well, oh. yeah, they die. I mean, it's oh. that that event happened in '99. So like, you know, fuck they, your they make alert. you think that like they're gonna go back there and look for him because the guy goes back and like, oh my god, we're missing people. We gotta get back out there. And they go back out there, but then they die before they get out there or something like that. And it's just like the end. And you're like, well, okay, that's all right, pretty realistic, I guess. Yeah, dude. I, I prefer the movie with James Franco where he saws his arm off and gets out. Ooh, oh, I like dude. a good underdog, like uh, you know. Redemption story. Was that 127 hours? Yeah, yeah dude. God. I can't believe that. Damn. I mean, that's a true story, too. And I can't believe that guy goes and talks about that shit and he, like, jokes about it and shit. I would be traumatized for life. I'd be like, oh, remember? That's, that's probably nightmares. how he deals with it. Just yeah. Joke about it and shit. Yeah. 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 That's how a lot of people deal with shit like that, I think. That's Just true. the level of balls you have to have in order to be like, all right, so I can either die trapped under this rock or I can cut my arm off, maybe die from blood loss, and then maybe go find help. But it'll that, get a shot. <sighs> Dude, yeah, wouldn't it suck that. if you did that and climbed out the rock and there's just a Wendy's about 100 yards away? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, damn, if I would have just tried screaming, maybe yeah, yeah. I would have done something. Some of the Wendy's would have heard me. Must not be a very busy Wendy's. Dude, I saw a video. It, it made me think of that movie. It was a dude who was like climbing. He was like out there in like, it was like snowy mountains and shit. Mm-hmm. And he fell in like an ice cavern. So like wherever he was walking, just like it was, I guess it was just covered in snow or something, and it weak ice or whatever, and he just fell down 
It was some like fucking. It was a few stories, and like Fuck. broke like a, some ribs and like broke a fucking a couple other bones. And this motherfucker, like, he has it on camera. He had his GoPro, and he's like down there and like looking up, and he's like, Jesus. "Fuck, I don't know what I'm gonna do." He fucking climbs out of this with his picks and shit all fucking beat up, and survives the motherfucker, and is just like, "Bro, dude, that takes." I don't think I could do that. Dude. That's a special breed of human being. Yeah, like, I think what was that, that girl in Hawaii that just got found a few weeks ago that she like fell down some cliff, broke her leg, and was gone, missing for like eight days, and was just surviving off of berries, bugs, and like dirty rainwater. Fuck. And she made it out. And she made it out. Damn. See, that's it's hardcore. A, that's the thing, though, and maybe you've experienced this before, just being in the military and mm-hmm. everything. I feel like you change when you're in that kind of life or death situation. I, I feel like. Something comes out. I mean, maybe not for some people, but I feel like something comes out of you where it's like, all right, I got to get the fuck out of here. I'm going to die. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. when you hit that that wall where you're like, life or death, you know? Yeah, there's got to be some part of your your lizard brain that kind of yeah. harkens back to the, the caveman ways, those caveman genetics where it's basic survival, and if you don't do what you have to do, you're dead. Yeah. Right. Like, I'd never exp- – I, I did experience something like that, like, one time, but only for a brief moment. Where it was like a, a genuine fear of death right at that moment. I remember I only did one deployment to Afghanistan. Um, and for the most part, like my deployment wasn't all that bad. It was mainly uh, an advise and assist mission as we kind of trained the Afghan National Army and the Afghan Uniform Police units to kind of patrol their own country. But they're not doing a good, they're never going to be able to do a good job. Let's just be real. Uh, but I remember it was the day after uh, my buddy got killed in Afghanistan and where we were, we were, uh, about 150 meters South of the ECP, the entrance control point. So like the walking entrance and exit and you know, the, where the vehicles go in and out and, uh, all's quiet middle of the day. And then out of nowhere, just this massive boom hits. And, uh, I look to my left and there's just like mushroom cloud. I'm like, Oh, someone dropped a bomb on us. And right then I was like, Oh, I'm going to die right now. This is this is not good. This is a uh, this is a little harrowing. And then um, you know we did an assessment. And apparently, some dude that got paid off by the Taliban stuffed about a thousand pounds of homemade explosives in the bed of his truck, just packed it in there, and just drove up to the gate like he was just coming onto the the post. Right when he got up to the gate, hit the button, and uh, you know the rest is history. But apparently, he he didn't pack the truck right. So like his goal was to have it the explosion go outward, but for whatever reason, the way he packed the bed of his truck, it just went up. So uh, thank God no one got killed in that one. But oh wow, yeah, that one was a uh, that one that one was a little hilarious. Yeah, yeah that God. one made my butthole pucker a little bit. Yeah, I bet, dude. Because <laughs> I was up in the turret too, and I just you know you could sense the explosion, but then there's like that split second delay between the, when the explosion hits and when the shockwave actually hits you. So right when I was turning, that's when the shockwave hit me and kind of rocked me back in the turret. I'm like, oh, this is it. This yeah. is uh, this is how I'm going out. Okay. Yeah, I feel this, and then I'm just gonna melt. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever had a uh, experience like that, where like you were just like, literally thought you were gonna die? Literally thought I was gonna die. I can't really think of a, a scenario where I, I truly thought I was dead. Yeah, I really don't. Me neither. I, I've been robbed at gunpoint, but even at that oh, point, shit, I didn't think I was gonna die. Yo, what? Yeah, we Yo, thought, we gotta, we've, we've, we gotta probe this. What? Yeah, we've Holy talked shit. about this before. Yeah, he, yeah, you Damn, tell him, dude. inform him. What dude, it, was like, it was like home invasion style. Oh fuck! Yeah, me and my buddy were making a song or whatever. It was really late at night, and they like we had a party. Dudes came in, held me, held us in our bedroom, and like ransacked the house while one dude held the gun on us. And it was like a thirty-five minute thing, and. uh yeah, but like I don't know, I wasn't uh, too. Con- Maybe this is because I'm just stupid, and I don't know if I said this before <laughs> in the podcast, but I think it's because I'm just dumb and like I didn't assess the situation the right way. My friend was like terrified, you know, and I was I was mainly just pissed. I was like, these guys are gonna come to my room like this and just come to my house and take my shit. That's all my mind was focused on. I was not focused on like this, this guy could shoot me because I honestly believe that this guy's not going to shoot me. Soy boy, dude. <laughs> <laughs> this, you know, don't let the glasses fool you, dude. Don't let them fool you. Dude, I'm hardcore. I think the coolest thing about all of that, <laughs> what happened to that, is that his his other buddy, who wasn't as stupid, is like a legitimate <laughs> comic now, oh, and just he? put out a special 
and fucking told that story. And even he was like, oh, yeah, my buddy Seth. <laughs> oh, shit. What's this comic's name? Uh, Luke Knoll. Luke Knoll. He, was on, he was on SNL last season for like one season. Oh, really? And he got kicked off because... He's not very funny. Let's be honest. Luke Knoll's not funny. No. I mean, he does have a stand-up comedy special, though. So no, like. he, no he, he's hilarious, dude. But, um, yeah, he tells that story. You should check yeah. it out. Everybody listening, check it out. It's called Guitar Comic. Look it up on Spotify. It's a fucking hilarious it's album. Funny as shit. Okay. And he tells the whole story in, like, two parts. Because, like, in the middle of it, we we started to, like, get to know the dude that had the gun on us or the <laughs> other two. Because, like, like, he says, and he's like, well, we started to humanize ourselves because... That's the only thing we could do in that situation. And slowly but surely, after talking to the guy and, like, conversing with him, we yeah. kind of, like, got, like, a little, you know, and he tried to steal my laptop, and I was like, man, I got three years worth of songs on this laptop. Like, please don't take this laptop. And he's like, you're a musician? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, play me one of your songs. So, like, we played him one of our songs, that, <laughs> and they're stupid, like, stupid songs, like, yeah. stupid, fine songs. And that's... that. That type of songs me and Luke made together were funny ones, and I was like, "Well, you want to hear?" That's fu-? amazing. I was like, "You want to hear a funny one or a serious one?" And he was like, "Funny one." <laughs> so then, so then Luke plays like the song that we played him, which is completely ridiculous. Yeah, and then it's all about like. Well, I mean, did the guy steal his laptop? Or? Or? No, he gave me my laptop back. Actually. Oh shit, dude. That was your saving grace right there. He gave us our wallets or our laptops back. But he said he said whenever he played him the song, he said it got about five seconds in. He was like, turned his shit off. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, yeah, you got to listen to that shit. Dude. Yeah, it's good shit. Everybody listen yeah. to this. Go listen to that. Help help Luke out. He's probably poor. Probably. He listen like to us. Yeah. Dude. Yeah, I don't think I've ever been in a situation where I firmly thought I was going to die. I, I was on a ski lift in Gatlinburg, and I, 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 I didn't really enjoy that a whole lot. But uh, I was just being a pussy. But you should have filmed that. I wish we could have seen that. Oh, she did. No, oh, she filmed it. You're gonna have to send me that. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm get just sitting up there like, oh, I'm what of you, dude? What of <laughs> you? It's like, you know, let's go splunking, dude. Let's <laughs> belly crawl through some cracks in the earth. Go look at some fucking cave dicks. You made me go on Ferris wheel. Are you afraid of heights? Is that your thing? No, I mean, I just don't like being in like rickety contraptions. I don't. I'm not afraid of heights. I can be standing on the ground above the clouds. I'll be fine. That's a big guy thing, though, dude. You know what I'm, I mean? I'm six five, and I have that same issue. I'm it's down like, with standing. Yeah. I don't care how high we are. Yeah. But I don't like being in like a little box on this little rope that's like yeah. sending me up a mountain. Like I'd rather rather walk up the yeah. mountain than be in this little thing that's like swinging. And I'm Was like, there no thing. Oh, like hey. if there's a if you're in a vehicle that can be disassembled. In under 15 minutes with a Phillips head screwdriver, I don't like being in it. It's same. Yeah, exactly. No, I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. Yeah, that's that's my only discrepancy. Yeah, that's a big guy fear. I that's... like I like heights, but yeah, it's, it is. I'm like, yo, I'm a big person. I feel like I'm adding like a bunch of like strain on this. Yeah. Other like more the load than a, has shifted here. Where yeah, I'm like two of good. him, and if I'm sitting on there with somebody other another person, I'm like, man, this. Can this thing hold me? This thing like, ain't used to this. Like, <laughs> that's true. They don't test this out that often. <laughs> like, you guys are big dudes. That that thought never goes through my mind. I'm like, I'll be all right. I'm, I don't wait, like, yeah, you'd be yeah. all right, dude. You just over there sipping your fucking gluten free fucking latte, and you, you just look like you're like, um. So, uh, how, what craft beer selection do you have? And they they hand it to you, and then you're like. Are you, uh, uh, you know, can you inform me of the ABUs of all of these uh, specific beers? Because they're not on the menu. And the waiter's like, dude, I don't fucking know. And you're like, well, can you find out? <laughs> you know what I mean? You look like that. I look you like know what I mean? I, I, like if I had up my own podcast and I look like this, it, it would sound like a little bit like this. Welcome back to the craft beer hour. <laughs> I'm your host, Seth Ewing Huff. We have some wonderful guests today as far and uh, also some great music from the great band Chairbox. Great band. They'll be here in a little bit. But first, let's get into the IPAs. I could see that. See? You, you do, if you were doing this podcast, you look like you could be a, a, a DJ on NPR from like 2 a.m. to 3.30. Yeah. And I'm way too descriptive about the music I'm playing. Like, this yeah. next, this next no, song. No, you'd be like... Um, this is Gerald Cummings. Uh, you are listening to the the midnight hour. Uh, we've got some smooth jazz, some funkadelic rock, and some uh, interesting interviews from uh, local natives. <laughs> this is Seth. Thank you for listening. That's what. And, he, and then it goes into like clarinet trio. Fa, 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 yeah. Fa. And then it just cuts into the real song, which is like a psychedelic rock song. But it's just like after every time you stop singing, it's just like. Yeah, you'd be one of the most low energy DJs yeah. 
on radio. I have it. I I have taken my Ritalin today, so I have no emotion or personality whatsoever. <laughs> and all the and all the band names are like. And this next one's from a great new band called License Plate. <laughs> this is this this. And after that, after we're going to end out the hour with T. <laughs> Just a band called T. And they got bands like Cardigan. Cardigan. And th- there's the already a band called Cardigan, isn't there? Well, if there is one, there be. We are the last of the cartographers. No more maps oh, will be made after for we sure. perish. Oh, I'm from Portland in this in this attire. Oh yeah. I'm, uh, Everyone I, in the studio need a at fucking this point scarf. in the story And is maybe some like fingernail polish or something and then Yeah, do black like, fingernail yeah, polish and no, a you, scarf You need a, an old moth-eaten blazer with some like brown elbow pads Oh, to yeah, yeah, yeah With the beard yes. and the glasses Yeah The only thing that's not, like, I shouldn't have a backwards hat on cause No, just, you're not wearing any We're just fucking flannel, dude Anything like plaid or flannel I thought about wearing flannel today Should've Yeah, you should've Bro, who, who are you, bro? Out. Dude, I'm a new man this podcast oh, is taking panel. Yeah, I mean, uh, we've heat? been we've been having some success, dude. Have you noticed all of our episodes have some views, dude? Yeah, they've actually dude, been you guys looking are killing it. Right? We all forward. have some views, dude, on every episode. I feel like without Dale here, we're not going to get any views in this one. He's such a great guy, you know. The, he the is best, really like. Yeah. I feel Truly. like Dale is what pulls the podcast together. I think it's that the glue. It's like the wood glue, you know. I think that the amount of times he's changed my computer background screen, the amount of times he's downloaded all sorts of granny porn yeah. to my computer, granny porn. all the mm-hmm. times that he's just been a great pal. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think he's what drives this podcast and makes it great. You know, I think I think he's here in spirit, though. I feel it, dude. I can feel it, too. Well, let's touch upon that, that granny porn. Because looking at Dale, Dale does not look like... If we had to go around and say, like, Seth, you're definitely into male, female, male threesomes, for sure, exclusively. Like We've when girls talked get about this roasted. before in the show. Dale... Just, not, just your physical appearance sorry, wait, makes I'm me in, think. I'm, in, I'm into male, female, male, female threesomes. How does that work? What you said, male, male, female? Yes, yeah, two dudes, one guy. It, two dudes, one guy. Two dudes, yeah. one guy. Wait, no, wait, no, wait, no, wait, wait. no, no, no. <laughs> Seth, Seth uh, in, in all actuality, Seth is the kind of guy who's like, can I please just see you take your socks off? <laughs> you know what I mean? And he, dude, Seth straight get, he gets on Snapchat and he's, uh, I've seen it. I've seen him over there scrolling. He subscribes to all these different girls. Wow. And they have these feet accounts, and he all this all the are time. You, I, he'll, we'll, be, we'll be hanging out over here, and I'll be just like watching some TV, and I'll look over there, and I just see like a foot sock come off, and then he's it's like, "Big business, dude." And I didn't think of anything of it until he was like, "I, I saw it," and I was like, "Dude, what's that?" And he goes, uh, uh, oh, nothing. "Nothing," and he goes. I gotta go take a shit real quick, <laughs> and then he ran into the bathroom and turned uh, and came turned back like on. fucking yeah. Turned the fan on, Shower came, on came back yeah, came back like fucking three <laughs> seconds later. Came and back I'm like yo, you're sweaty. A, you're out of toilet paper, dude. Yeah, <laughs> you're out of toilet paper. No, dude. You know what's funny about Spencer is that um, you know how like when you take your elbow like this mm-hmm. and you cover it up like that's like with, with your hand, yeah, and it looks kind of like a butt or a you know, mm-hmm. he that's what he jacks off to. Word. Right yeah. on. He doesn't even like real. Yeah. He's he's he, he likes he gets off from pretending. It's uh, uh, abstract. Kind of loops up the the crease loops of his elbow the with Vaseline. It's on his own elbow. And yeah. just, it's and called just, abstract. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's called yeah. abstract. Abstract. Yeah, I'm okay. real into. Is that you know, category on Pornhub? It. I know it's not. It's, I bet it is. It's I don't some, like, know what yeah. comes up. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah, I mean maybe check it out, but I mean you know, nah, I'm gonna have a bit of free time. I'm into a lot of just you know you know like what's his name Dali you know Picasso. You know Monet. what I'm saying? Shout out. Michelangelo. Yeah, Michelangelo. He did the Sistine Chapel. The first I swear I got my on my uh drawn erotic inspiration porn. for real, dude. Dude, all that art from creative, all, dude. All, they, they, you gotta tell me that Michelangelo. It's pronounced Michelangelo, by the way. I'm just be real. Not Michelangelo. Yeah. Michelangelo. 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 Yeah, the way yeah. you yeah, exactly. I mean, this guy is the way the I'm way to trust yeah, him. you look like you would pronounce Michelangelo like Michelangelo. We're gonna take I mean, we're gonna take a short. Dude, that's he's, fucking he's racist glasses, to even though. say it like that, dude. You, you, that's fucking racist. Get this dude. though. Get this. Um, do you think that 
back in the day, when was the Sistine Chapel painted? I don't know. I, I'm an idiot. 16th century. Yeah. Maybe 14th. Somewhere around then. You, you, you missed one whole century in there. Do you uh, think? Could be 15th. We could don't know. Be. I'm thinking it's, no, either, I mean, it's an even, no, it's an it even painted, number. I know that we're much. We're all morons, so none of us actually know. Yeah. All right. Well, here's my question. What do you think they jacked off to back then? Just imagination? or? I mean, like, they were all fucking little boys back then. <laughs> that was a renaissance. They Pedophilia <laughs> and homosexuality, that was that was the times. You know? For all days. the listeners getting mad right now, like don't <laughs> I I'm I, I didn't come up with this. This is merely I'm is that, I'm, is a that, moron, is that a fact? I'm merely reporting what I've been told by experts in the field. Perverts in the field. Fucking perverts yeah, in the field, dude, really. That's like the name you, assessed if, fucking other show. Perverts in the field? Yeah. <laughs> if you were uh, Michelangelo do you think if you could paint titties that well, you just paint some nice ass titties and then that's your porn? You know? Yeah, I, I would. would. Fuck yeah. If I, I tried to do that when I was 11 one time. I was like, well, I can just draw boobs and that'll work. And I'm not a very good artist. And you just draw, drew two circles with dots and you're like, <laughs> not doing, no, it, it's not doing it. it. Yeah, I tried. But you it, try touching it, it just crinkles. You're like, eh, yeah. she gone. We generally uh, uh, loop around to music at some point in this podcast because we do love it so much. So, you a music guy? I listen to a lot of music. I used to play guitar back in the day, but I wasn't really I wasn't really interested in guitar when I was a kid. I kind of did it because my dad's like, "You're gonna play guitar." I'm like, "But dad, I want to be a drummer. I don't give a shit. You're gonna you're gonna play good." My dad was my dad's a Vietnam vet and retired homicide detective. My dad's twisted. He's like, "I'm not gonna hear you banging on shit all fucking day." Yeah, he's, you're gonna play guitar and you're gonna plug your headphones into it, yeah. so I don't have to hear this bullshit. But he like, earned it. No, I, I feel like my yeah. Yeah. I played drums when I was growing up, and, and I feel like my parents fucking hated me. And yeah, I could see that. Dude, you know what I mean? I was such a spastic kid. I, I was like that, though. To I wanted to play drums, but my parents didn't want me to play drums because probably that reason. But even in, like, the band in, like, middle school and shit when I, I joined the band, mm -hmm. I was like, I want to play percussion, play drums. And they were like, no, you got to play a real instrument. And I was like, A real instrument? Yeah. They were like, they wanted me to read music and let's be real. Just reading sheet music on a snare drum is not really reading music. Yeah, it's you like half I mean? the battle because, like, you got the rhythm part, but if you're playing clarinet or whatever, you got to like also know what notes to hit and pay attention to the rhythm exactly. and the key signature. Dude, I I never could wrap my head around so reading I played, music. I played saxophone, and I got good, but then I got to high school, and I was like, I play guitar. I was like, I'm not going to be in a fucking band, which I kind of, looking back, nah, I don't even regret that, dude. I mean, the kids in band had fun, but I don't, I don't want to be in a fucking high school band, dude. I was in high school, man. I was a marching band, dude. Really? I, just, I played dude, violin when I was a kid, I too. wanted to play That's fucking dope. metal music, dude. I was like, I don't want to... Sp they spent a lot of time, especially at my school, dude. The band was like a fucking commitment, dude. You had to want to be in it. Yeah. And I didn't want to be in it, dude. And I played sports. I played, you know... A well, I feel like bands in the South take a lot more pride in being a band than they do in California. Cause like if you're a band in high school and even like some of the colleges out in California, no one gives a shit, but it, that's like a Southern tradition thing. Isn't it? Where I like the, I don't fucking know. I guess. Cause I know what Tennessee state, their, their band is one of the, I was at this Amazon networking event, uh, a few couple months back. And, um, you know, it was like one of the. You ever see the movie The Intern with Vince Vaughn and Owen Wilson? Oh yeah. Kind of like that. Like, hey, we're a cool company. We're Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> but they had the, the Tennessee state marching band come out and they, Murdered. It was it was one of the greatest live musical performances I think I've ever seen. They were unbelievable. There was a lot of like more than on the West Coast. I feel like a lot of really good college programs, marching bands, and yeah. shit like that, in like the Midwest and the South, like that, like that little slip, like sliver. Yeah. I, like, feel, I feel like the college that Nick Cannon went to in that movie <laughs> Drum Line <laughs> is probably the hottest fucking uh, marching band I'm ever going. Dude, hear. I shit, I shit you not, my dad. This would happen about every couple months in my house. My dad was way into like just popping in a DVD and watching one scene from a movie. He's like, you want to go watch that one scene from The Matrix, the gun one, when they go into the elevators and they're shooting on the pillars? I'm like, all right, I guess. And just watch that scene and be like, sweet. And that'd be it. And he would always go, hey, you want to go watch that last scene in Drumline? That, that fucking scene's tight, dude. Let's go watch the last scene in Drumline. You know, the last drum battle? I'm like, yeah, I know what you're talking about, Dad. Let's go. <laughs> He'd turn up like the surround sound all the way and just be like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, yep, we've seen this a million times. <laughs> and, I, and I was in Drumline and Marching Band in high school, and he was like, fucking, he was so always so stoked about it. One time we had to play like these like state championship things at Ohio State Stadium. What what's it called? The shoe. And like right before you do your performance, it has to be complete silence in the entire stadium. You know, while you're like getting ready. You know what I mean? And they count you off. 
And so it was like, please, you know, and that's the guy was like, you know, please remain silent while they make their formations or whatever. Whole stadium silent. And you just hear in the background right before we start, our high school is called the Cody East. You just hear like, come on, the Cody East, let's win one for Cincinnati. <laughs> <laughs> no one cheered afterwards. <laughs> and I was like, who was that fucking asshole who did that? And all my friends afterwards, they were like, who, who the fuck yelled? And my dad walks up, he's like, did you guys hear me? Did you guys hear me? <laughs> <laughs> like, God damn it, Dad. <laughs> so fucking stoked. I was in drumline. Most hardcore dad's like, what? What, are you queer or something? You're in the fucking march? My dad was like, oh, fuck yeah, you made drumline? You want to go watch that scene now that you made it? <laughs> you want to. So I, I bet your dad loves YouTube then. That was that was oh, pre-YouTube. Yeah. Oh, dude, he, he loves like, We're going we're gonna to put the D- DVD. You remember the third deleted scene in The Wedding <laughs> Crashers? I'm going to fucking watch that right now. It's my favorite. Yeah, we're in the, we're in the car to be like, hey, look up that one scene on YouTube. I'm like, I don't think I can do that, Dad. But anyway, I digress. So what, um, listening though, like what kind mm-hmm. of music do you listen to? I'm all over the place. Right now I'm kind of going through like a, a dirty trap phase for whatever reason. Uh, uh, my buddy just showed me a Suicide Boys, so I've been listening to them non- literally nonstop for the past maybe three, four days. Suicide Boys, my buddy, <coughs> excuse me, forgive my cough. My buddy Joe likes him. I listen to it. They sound like they are uh, fans of the Insane Clown Posse. <laughs> they kind of do. I watched an interview with them, and they they look like they'd be in an Insane Clown Posse, like a chapter, like the not necessarily like the president, vice president, but like the secretary or treasurer or something of a fan club chapter of the ICP. Dude, if you were a fucking, if you were in ICP, mm-hmm. what would your name be? Because oh, you've shit. got what's their names, fucking. Juggalo J and fucking uh, I don't know their names. I, Vi- Violent J and Silent Bob, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Violent Violent J and what's the other one? What's the other one? Who's the other fucking uh, ICP? Who's the other clown? I don't know. You got it. Uh, doesn't no, fucking no, no, matter. You, know, you got Violent J and Shaggy Two Dope. Oh, Shaggy Two Dope. <laughs> Shaggy yeah. Two Dope. Shaggy Two do- Dope. What would your fucking ICP name be, dude? Well, shit, I don't. I don't even know because Shaggy Too Dope is too dope. It is too that dope. You, you really, there's nothing you could know nah, bro, ICP name. No, get real. Mm. Shaggy Too Dope probably came up with his name first, and J- Violent J was like, dude, I'm never going to be able to come up with a fucking cool name. And Shaggy was like, yo, J, but you violent, bro. And he was like, that's it. I'm Violent J. Violent J. You know what I'm saying? Shit. So, hmm. Damn, so, I don't, you're going to have to come back to me. I got I to gotta stew on that for a bit. Seven. They'd call me Mud Plug. Mud Plug. <laughs> they call me Mud Plug. They'd be like, "Yo, what's up? It's another insane psychopathic track, and we got the homie Mud Plug." You know what I mean? That's exactly what it would sound like. Yeah, probably. You could just be like their hype man. Yeah, Mud Plug. You'd be a great hype Dude, man. Dude, if they if they're like, "Hey, we'll give you," excuse me, excuse me. Um, if they gave you, like, what if they're like, "Yo, we'll give you four thousand dollars." To paint your face and just go jump around stage and just be like, yeah, and just like be a part of the posse for one show. Four grand? For one Four grand. Are you kidding? Like, I'd bro, I'd do it for eight bucks and bro. Some I, I would McNuggets. do it for free for the experience, but <laughs> if they were going to pay me four grand for it, I would take it and yeah. not ask. A they got to pay you something. Okay, yeah. so what, that one kind of backfired to me. I thought you guys would be like, no, it'd have to be. No, you guys are you kidding me? Quick. Dude, I don't listen to the insane clown posse. I'll admit it. I respect them though. I don't think they're. I mean, fuck it, dude. I'm, I'm with that shit, dude. It takes I a think lot of balls to do what they do. It takes a lot of balls to do what they do, and they've definitely made some noise. And they they did their little DIY hustle, which they went from. They were like, okay, we're gonna go to this kind of outskirty city that may not be that popular, and blow the fuck up on them. And once we take over that city, we're gonna go to another city like that. And that's how they got big. And now they donate to charity and all sorts of cool shit. I guess. Yeah, did you make that part up? No, I didn't, dude. Is that's, that true? That, that, 100, yeah, that's true. They're they're actually like, they're not terrible people at all. You know I don't think I mean? they're terrible people. I'm not. I don't like the music. I think some. I mean, no, but but, aside from the music, I think their fans are the terrible people. But, yeah, they're like yeah, Philadelphia Eagles fans. Yeah, yeah. it does kind of <laughs> just terrible human yeah. beings. I don't know, dude. I want to piss off our uh, Juggalo fucking I'm not fan saying, I'm base. Just saying some, you know I've seen mean? some. I've seen some of them do some <laughs> shitty shit before. You know what I mean? Yeah, Where it's just I like, mean, come let's on. say. I mean, there's a lot of stereotypes. Maybe. M- you know, meth use. You know, maybe uh, <laughs> like maybe some promiscuous sex. 
Maybe some, some unplanned pregnancies, perhaps. Yeah, oh, for maybe sure. Plenty of unplanned pregnancies. Yeah. Maybe that were conceived after a, tons of intravenous fucking drug use. You know yeah. what I mean? Do you think they have like have, you, have you seen there and shit? Yes. Have you ever oh, seen the videos of like fucking what's his Bush, name? The, the Busey guy. What's the, the, the Busey? Not Gary Busey, but the the big fat dude that is like just a personality. But dude, whatever. Just yo, watch some fucking gathering of the Juggalo videos. Oh god, yo, that's oh, all you Jesus. need. They're not classy people. <laughs> do you think? It, do you think? It's Shout like, out, drink some Fago. Do you think? It's Shout out to almost ICP. Cut, like cult like. Yeah, cult like. I think it's a place for people that describe themselves as like outcast. Maybe <laughs> make I don't fun know. of my whole life. You know, but it's a lot of people. Make fun that, of me now, bitch. You you know you. I don't know, dude. I don't want to talk shit on people like that because I, I know people that are like juggalos and into that kind of shit. There are, are good people. It's, it's not my thing, but so when you say like oh, like no. dirty trap, like what's an example? Like so, I mean, Suicide Boys. Uh, I don't think I've heard them. Oh, I'll send you some stuff. Uh, <laughs> Ghost Man Two. I just found out Sounds about like ICP. Dude. So what? So <laughs> since, since I don't know any of this, like, yeah. so what's it entail? Is it just like kind of like? Just grimy trap, like yeah, pretty much. It's very, uh, very SoundCloud esque okay. in its nature. But speaking of which, like, if so, we already know your ICP <laughs> name. If you were a SoundCloud rapper, what would your name? Because I already have my SoundCloud. Doctor Brown, dude. I'm Dr. already, Brown? I'm already yeah. a thing, dude. It, it, you Check have to have me out a on YouTube in front of it. And L I L. No, I'm, the, I'm Little Gumby, dude. I'm the Little Gumby. I'm Little Gumby. I'm the Doctor Brown. You the Doctor Brown. The Doctor Brown. Know, see me. That seems very. Uh, very mid '90s, like East Coast, West Coast, so big Tupac. Going for, dude. No, they were okay. going dirty trap. Oh, you yeah, going if dirty yeah, trap? If you're SoundCloud yeah. rapper. Oh, they probably just call me uh, Lil Brown. Nah, dude, they just probably call me. They probably call me Big Homie, dude. <laughs> I would actually take the title, dude. Big Homie. Big Homie. Big Homie, yeah. dude. Trey Market. Yeah, they call me BH. Wait, what's yours again? Mm-hmm. Lil Gumby. Lil Gumby. Lil Gumby. Big Homie. Big Homie. Dude, so, that'd be like, I'd be something like just like Kid Ghost. Kid Ghost, Kid, dude. That's actually pretty dope. Yeah, that Kid is, Ghost. dude. Kid Ghost, dude. It's like Ghost Man and Kid Cuddy. Like, yeah. Kid together. Ghost? Put together. Okay. I feel that. So you got Big Homie, Kid Ghost, and fucking Lil Gumby. Yo, we're about to drop the fucking hottest shit, dude. Damn, dude. Yo, that... Nashville's about to blow the fuck up. Yeah, dude. Cue it. Is there like a, um, uh, like, is there like live, live shit like that, like around here in Nashville? or Not that I've seen, no. Where's <laughs> that usually, like in... Like There's a lot of shows like that in LA I've seen. Um, I've never been to uh, like a trap show. Uh, I've always wanted to go just for the experience of it. But um, no, that kind of music hasn't really hit a foothold. I mean, at least from my perspective here in this town. Trap uh, music. Yeah. I mean, dirty well, I mean, people music. listen to it, but not necessarily like live shows and actually going to it. Um, I feel like that place Limelight has some like trap shows. Yeah, I almost went to Amigos concert there one time. Yeah, like that's oh, shit. Yeah, but. Uh, I, yeah, I think you're right. I've been to a Juicy J concert and a Project Pat concert. Oh, I don't shit. think that's really... Is that trap? I don't think that's no, really trap. that's not really trap. That's Memphis rap, dude. The that's only, my childhood is what that is, dude. <laughs> the only rap concert that, or hip-hop concert I've ever been to, I think, is uh, uh, Wiz Khalifa. And that's not trap at all, really, no. right? That's more like... No. I've only been to one hip-hop concert. It was, uh, you know, Aesop Rock from uh, Rhyme Stairs label? Yeah. Yeah, right, I saw yeah. him and uh, Rob Sonic... Um, and like the the opening act, it was up in Chicago. The opening act uh, was this dude, Open Mike Eagle. He's starting to blow up now, but um, it was like halfway through the opening act set, uh, Hannibal Burris came out on stage oh, and started telling jokes. <laughs> and I, I was just pissed drunk. And right when I saw Hannibal, I just started weeping. Just, <laughs> dude, <laughs> oh, it's amazing. Dude, he's funny as fuck, dude. Dude, um, ASAP Rock, <clears throat> not ASAP Rocky, but ASAP right, Rock. Yeah. He. Uh, have you ever seen that thing on the internet? It's like it's like a uh, line, and it's every rapper like yeah. ranked on how you know how big of a vocabulary they yeah. have. Aesop Rock's number one on that. Yeah, and he he has like double the vocabulary. The next nearest guy to him. There's like a, yeah, a huge like scientific study end. that came out with him, um, where they like took away like the most common words in the English language is the like um, and took that entire music, musician's catalog and looked at how many different unique words that musician said over the entirety of the career. And Aesop Rock had 
almost 9,000, I think. I might be butchering the actual number, but... It's, it's, like, it's, just, it's way more obscene. than everybody else. Like, way the fuck more. Yeah. Even like they Eminem say that he has a, or fucking... Eight. Eminem's up there, but, like, it's seriously the last person... Eminem's, like, right, kind of up in, like, the highest echelon of the middle of a pack. Or like, immortal technique. No, that's not really my thing, but that dude... I don't know. That's just like uh, he, was, he was up there. I think Tech Nine's up there, too. Yeah, Tech Nine is. And, but, yeah, but then it's, like, a, a huge gap, and then ASAP... No ASAP shit. Yeah. yeah. He's fucking like they they say he has a, a vocabulary size similar to that of Shakespeare, which I don't know. I don't. I didn't. I didn't say it. But you listen to his music. It's and insane. Been, yeah, he is. A, he is a a banger of a song about his cat. Name name another rapper that is gonna I'll publicly put put out a song about his cat. Like, Dude, you know on. who could be in that? Um, I don't think when they made that he was very big yet, but Lil Dicky would probably be pretty high in that. Oh, for sure. Lil yeah. Dicky's dope, dude. Yeah, <laughs> he's good, dude. <laughs> Did you have you seen the new one he did the Earth thing? I mean, it's not super new now, but no, but I've wanted to watch it. I haven't seen it. Yet. It's pretty cool. I it has seen like, it. Oh, it's, it's yeah. We'll watch it after all this. It, but it, it's like uh, it's got everybody in it. It's got cameos from like Jack Black and Ariana Grande and fucking Justin Bieber and Cardi B oh, and damn. Beyonce and whoever the you know. All right, here let's do our age old question. This or that? Um, right. Yeah, Cardi fine. B or Nicki Minaj. <sighs> I'm going Nikki. Dude. I got to go Nikki. You're the only person that's ever said Cardi B. I know. I'm I gotta literally, go what is this like, goddamn. <laughs> this is like the fifth time we've done it. Like, yeah. Could be, I mean, if if we didn't hear about the fact that Cardi B at one point was drugging dudes, you know, and stealing their shit, then I'd be, I'd be well, Cardi. Well, I like her, dude. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, you're just twisted as fuck to begin with, but uh, <laughs> no, Nikki for sure. I'm going Nikki. Yes. Yeah. All right, fair enough. We don't even have to talk about that anymore. <laughs> cool. I, I just want to throw that out there really quick. All right. Hey, I just want to throw this out there real quick. We need to take a second uh, to thank our sponsors, Dale Almond. Uh, fantastic company, fantastic products, uh, really the nicest people to work with. Go down and see them over there on Riverside. Uh, and also, uh, our, we have to take a little bit of time just to get this out of the way. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, for um, you know bringing the show to you today, Dale Almonds Almonds. It's Dale Almonds Almonds, the most delicious almonds in the game. They're crunchy. Some can be sweet, but or or not. I don't know. Dale Almonds Almonds. And while you're at Dale Almonds Almonds Factory, make sure you pick up your cover copy of the Almond Brothers Band. Live in almond country. Yeah. Uh, it's good down picking music they're, for the dude, whole family. And they're playing. And you all, heard that here. They're playing all the hits, too. I mean, they. Every day. Every, every day. They're playing the song every day. Every shift. Every shift. That's a great Two one of their too. favorite songs because, you know, the almonds are some hard working people. Okay. Yeah. Went different places no, with that, cool, but cool. it works. We'll recover. Uh, anyway, what do you think about this, Nick? Shout out to Dell's Almonds Almonds, bro. <laughs> and the Almond Brothers cover band, Almond Brothers. Band. Yeah, but the Almonds first. And while you're at the Almond <laughs> yeah, Brothers enough. band concert, presented by Dale Almond's Almonds, be sure to get by the concession stand and try one of the old-fashioned almond smoothies. Not almond s- smoothies, almond smoothies. So it's, there's, uh, not pieces almond, there's not, of, al- yeah. pieces there's not of, almonds in it. No, but it's got pieces of real almonds in it. It's got pieces of, of real almond in it, which it has pieces of dale in it. It's like it's basically a smoothie with bits of dale in yeah, it. Yeah, but it's not like almond like the nut. No. no but it's almond, like, you know, there's almonds dale in it, almond the, is kind of, of a nut. He is a nut sometimes, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he is. He's, he's a, a little rascal. rascal. He is, You dude. know, he's a rascal. He can't be. A, he can be a little nutty. Uh, he can. Uh, he can be. Oh, what a buddy. Let's move on. <laughs> so, uh, thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, dude, appreciate it, bro. Dude, I'm having too much fun. You know, dude, you can never <laughs> have too much fun. I think I'm having too much. fun. I think we're dude. having too much fun. I'm dude. having just the right amount of fun. Yeah. Right, right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look how self indulgent we sound now. <laughs> yeah, man. All right. Well, this is a uh, yo, Nick. Yo, you look like uh, the guy that tried to get fucking every uh, every one of Vince Vaughn's roles ever, but didn't because they correct, actually sir. hired Vince Vaughn. You you are correct. You, you, I like, will not object. You look like Vince Vaughn's step stunt double. Yeah, like his stunt. You double. know, I'm gonna take that as a compliment because Vince is a goddamn handsome man. 
good looking guy. Yeah. He's this, a good looking dude. Yeah, he can he's, act. He's fucking he hilarious. Act his dude. ass off. He, he, yeah, he's yeah, got chops. Take away wedding crashers. Take away all the funny shit like that second season of True Detective. Do you guys ever see dude, that? Wedding Crashers is a good I movie, well, dude. Yeah, 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 I'm saying take away his comedic <laughs> roles, bro. Vince in a dramatic role, supremely underrated. Oh yeah, dude. Vince Vaughn is a good fucking actor, dude. Yeah, except I'll True Detective season two kind of sucked. That's yeah, I don't I even know what I mean, that is. is. He was good in it. I thought he was good in it. Yeah, yeah, he was. The story was this bad. Season three is insane, three is good. dude. Yeah, but n- nothing's ever going to top season one. No, that was insane. Yeah, Spence, you look like Macho Man Randy Savage off duty. <laughs> off duty. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, brother. Yeah, we already know what you look like, Seth. We already talked about that. You 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 look like the guy that used to be like the hit at the coffee shop, but you you're not anymore. It's like totally new staff and new generation, but you still hang out at the same one. So now you're just like the quiet guy reading the book in the corner. Yeah, dude. But you used to be the life of it. I had my heyday. You, yeah, you did, but it's over now. Hey, all things must come to an end. All right. Well, you know what? Now I'm going to go in on you, all Spencer. Right, I think if you you're from Tennessee, right? Yeah, dude. Okay. Oh, right. If you were if you grew up in any other state besides Tennessee, at this very moment, you'd be working at an O'Reilly Auto Parts store. I'd be like, it's yeah. your carburetor. Hey, hey, yo, Frankie. Hey, man, we got brake pads for 92 Astro Van. Hey, no. uh, Frankie, dude. you got SKU uh, 8091736. Dude, that's funny uh, because I'm No, like, we ain't got no more of the blink of fluids. <laughs> hey, fucker, like, yo, we're out of brake pads, Holmes. <laughs> Yeah, I can see that, dude. I, I would probably be at least assistant manager by now. Oh, 100%. You know? You know, have a little bit of money in that, you know, company provided 401k by exactly. now. Exactly. Yep. But I would be, I would just be buckling down and making a career out of it. Dude. If yeah. I was from Going maybe District Butte, Anderson. Montana, yeah. I would be at an O'Reilly's if yeah. they exist. If you're from Butte, Albuquerque, Montana. New Mexico, O'Reilly's for sure. Right. Well, you know, it's funny you said that because uh, on another podcast, someone said, I think I said that you look like you just got fired from AutoZone. So. <laughs> no, I don't think that's ever been said, but that's a good one. That. That's a good one right there. I'm going to go take a piss. I'm going to go after you. So usually when someone goes takes a piss on this show, mm-hmm. I talk shit about... Um, Whoever you want to talk to. Oh, we're talking shit? Yeah, shit oh, talking about. Who do you want to sh- talk shit about right now? You know, I'm, I'm going to be mature this time. I'm not going to talk shit about the person. Oh, I'm gonna come talk on, shit just about. one, just one, just no, one. No, here's who I'm going to talk shit about. Um... There's this grandpa on a cruise ship dropped his one year old granddaughter off the side of it on accident. Fuck. When did this happen? Pretty recently, I think. Holy shit. Yeah. And Yo, it was that's docked. why I would never take a cruise. Well, I, I talked about I talked right about there. falling off a cruise ship earlier, remember? Yeah. That's just it's terrifying, but it wasn't even moving. It was docked. Dude. It's like come Can on, grandpa. Imagine? Why were you holding the baby over? Why, why, why were you like putting her in that position? Is he your dad? Did you watch that clip of Michael Jackson holding his kid over the yeah. the railing a little too many times? Yeah, that was that was kind of fucked up. And he, he had blanket. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, that that video was fucked. He was like, that was insane. I forgot about that video. Fuck, dude. He was like, I was just trying to show it to the crowd. Like, bitch, hold it up. Don't hold it yeah. over the railing and down. Yeah, you got to go Simba. You can't do MJ. Yeah, exactly. You're not making a layup. You're. <laughs> Speaking of which, dude, I'm Bill really... Burr has a great bit about the type of people that take cruises. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you see his, he, his most recent uh, special? Um, he actually filmed at the Ryman, um, and he has a whole bit about uh, his ethnic cleansing will take place just purely from the people that go on cruise, cruises <laughs> for vacation. <laughs> which, I mean, when you think about it, it's kind of sound logic. Yeah. Like, I was, I was listening to it. I was laughing, but in the back of my head, I was like, you know what? You know, Bill's making a lot of sense here. I'm kind of, I'm kind of on board with this. He's got a good podcast. Oh, his podcast is hilarious. Yeah. You just, you see the one, uh, Justin Long came on. No. God damn it, that guy's talented. Justin Long, he's the, he's the walrus dude. Yeah. Isn't that movie Tusk? Tusk. Yes. That movie is Wallace. fucked up. Wallace. <laughs> Wallace. Mr. Tusk. <laughs> Man, no. And he's like, arr, arr, arr. and his fucking. Girlfriend who's now with his fucking buddy yeah. throws a fish mm-hmm. down in the fucking there you go, bitch. What a fucking walrus bitch. And he's just like, oh, oh thank you. And he goes and grabs it. And he's like, I'm a walrus. That's <laughs> fucked up. It really haunts my dreams, dude. Yeah, I'm glad I showed that to you. <laughs> I, I prefer, you know, Justin Long, like, he's a likable character. And, like, in, in I think Waiting is my favorite role of his. Mm. But his role in Jeepers Creepers 1. Bro. 
fucking pisses me off, dude. Does it? Yes. Really? Because I thought you were going to go positive with no, that train dude, of thought. No, dude, it's not his fault. It's the writer's fault because that movie he pisses so many me mistakes. off. Because, and they're so... Bl- it's like, his sister fucked him up, too, though. It's just his like, sister screwed him up. Yeah. Bro, come on. It, it really fucking... It, it totally lost me whenever it gets to the point where there's that fucking like sewer drain that's like going down like that. And he's like, what's down here? <laughs> he's like, hold my ankles. And she's like, oh, I'm not strong. And then, and then a crow goes yeah. like, ah! and she's like, ah! yeah, exactly. And yep. he just falls down there. I was like, wow, dude. I was like, that's, how, that's, that's a- how we're getting here. I was mm-hmm. like, that's lazy. Dude. That'd be my sister that's, for sure. That's how we're I'd getting be to this to point though. Some shit and my sister would be like, oh, okay. Hey, hold on to me. It's everything's fine. And then she'd get freaked out like a, a spider would drop on her shoulder. Just ah, no. Yeah, and then I'd fall down kid, and I'm doomed. Yeah. Dude, he didn't even try to go like. No, he was just like okay. Like he was like crawling down it almost. He was just yeah. like I'm okay, yeah. cool. Let's go to my fucking certain death. And he goes down there and there's like people that that movie really scared me when it came out. I was Man. I was a little kid. I rewatched it about two weeks ago. Really, and it does not hold up. I'm sorry, it doesn't. No, the no, second one is way better. Second one is actually third one good. goes back to the f- terrible. Yeah, third but one. Sucks. Number two is the best. I don't movie. think yeah. I saw two. But waiting, that's Justin Long's best movie, other than Mr. Tusk. I thought he was pretty funny in Dodgeball. Oh yeah, that's another <clears> one. That's what I'm saying. I like him. I, I think Jeepers Creepers is really. But then when I saw him in Tusk, I was like, oh man, his career is really <laughs> taking a nose. Take, out yeah, here. taking a turn for the worse. Well, he probably just did it because that's a Kevin Smith like wrote and directed that, and I feel like they're kind of like homies. Oh, he did. I didn't know yeah. that. Mm. Silent Bob. They're coming out with a a sequel to fucking Jay and Silent Bob. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I know. I saw that. I used to always get called fucking Jay because I'd have <laughs> long hair like a little longer than this. I, I see the resemblance for sure. That's yeah. not a bad thing. Though. And I mean, I guess you know other reasons people are like oh it's fucking the fat that's cock you got. Yeah, that's it. Dude. Uh, and I'd like to, you know, dance sometimes in front of burger stores and, like, you know, tuck my dick in balls and, mm-hmm. you know, just be like, would you fuck Dude, me? Dude, I'd fuck me. Sounds you know, like a Wednesday like night. fucking Hannibal you know? Lecter. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so what? what's one movie that you saw probably a little bit too young that really Ooh, fucked up a lot of shit for you I know what mine as is. an adult now? Do you want me to go? I, Check out mine. Yeah, yeah, go for it. All right. Mine was fucking uh, Hannibal. I saw that when I was like nine, dude. And like that, that movie was in the end when like he has her like come down for dinner after he like gets. Her, have you you seen Hannibal? Right. I don't know <laughs> if I've actually watched Hannibal. We started. We started the like, series. It, I, no, it was, Silence it's a of the sequel Lambs. to uh, it's Silence like the of the Lambs. Yeah. Silence of the Lambs. I don't think so. I think I've only seen Silence of the which, Lambs, which I like, only watched for the first time <clears throat> maybe like four. To six months ago Really? Yeah no, Dude, huh. my fucked up grandma Who was like watching me at the time <clears throat> She was like a pill head Sorry, grandma um, We love you, Grammy <laughs> I love you, Grammy Shout uh, out to Grammy grandma. But anyway Hey, sh- shout out to my grandma too While we're at it I love yeah. you, Grandma <laughs> Shout out to everybody's grandmas But she was like What? I, got, I bought you and your dad And your brother tickets To Hannibal tonight And I was like What's Hannibal? Because I'm like fucking nine or whatever And she's like Oh, it's the sequel to Silence of the Lambs and that movie came out when I was one, so art, you already know Grandma's a little bit high. Mm-hmm. And um, and I was like, okay. And I didn't know it was scary, and she was like, we'll watch the first one together. So she put on Silence, made me watch Silence of the Lambs, and then me and my dad and my brother had to go see Hannibal in theaters. And there's a scene in the end where he, like, cuts the top of this dude's head off and, like, just peels off the top of his skull. I'm just sitting there like, this is the most disgusting I've ever seen. And he, like, cuts a piece out of his brain and then feeds it to... His own brain to the guy, and like I was like, oh, this is even at a very young age. I was like, oh, this is gonna, I'm gonna, I'm not sleeping tonight or for a very long time. Like this is terrifying. Like, fuck that movie. I still don't watch it. it makes me kind of hungry, dude. It does. I mean, the brain does look pretty appetizing. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely getting some hearties after this for sure. I, I never, <laughs> I never had like a movie that I feel like I saw too young. I saw Candyman when I was. Probably, I was in elementary school. Candyman, who's in that? I, I don't know the actor's name, but it was about. It was kind of like it was like a, a thing you'd say. You'd be like Candyman, 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 Candyman. Oh, like Bloody Mary in the mirror. Yeah, and he was like always covered in bees and shit. And I don't know. The, Jesus, it was like it doesn't sound the like the storyline was like based in like a like a project building in like New York or something. It was like real like 
It was, it was weird, dude, but I don't know. I remember renting that from, like, a video store when I was a kid. And my parents were like, we watch Candyman. When he, like, show and up. It scared, it's, yeah, it scared the shit out of me. And he had, like, a hook hand, and he was, like, covered in bees. And he'd, like, show up behind, like, behind him in the mirror or whatever, Yeah, because right? he was, like, one of those things. Yeah. Like, yo, go in the mirror and, like, say it five times, and he'd appear. And, like, a motherfucker would appear and just, like, murder him. And I was like, yo, is that real? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, it scared me. I Like, when I, you know, as much as... You know, who came up with that, kid. like the Blood Mary idea and all that shit? You know what I mean? Like, where did that come from? You know, it was some redneck. He was like, hey, you know, <laughs> got a story to tell you. <laughs> and then he just went on with it. <laughs> so I actually got a few. I'm such a bitch when it comes to horror movies. Like, I still like I'm trying to desperately trying to wade my through wade my way through The Conjuring 2. I don't know if you guys have seen that. Oh, the country yeah, I saw in theaters, and I was like, I'm fucked up. Like, yeah, those I'm, I'm the biggest bitch when it comes to horror movies. scary, dude. dude. But the I think the first one that comes to mind for me is Jaws, right? Oh, but yeah. Jaws, like, obviously, as adults now, Jaws is a classic movie. It's one of the greatest movies of all time. Uh, but I saw it when I was, like, maybe seven years old. I remember it so vividly. I was... Watching it with my sister and my dad, and we we're sitting in my family room watching on the TV. My dad bought, you know, went all out, bought this TV, like the big ones, like the the, the tube that still gl- glowed back in the day. Oh yeah, so oh, this yeah, is the, like the big mid-90s. fucking yeah. thick. Yeah, weighed like sits on the floor. Yeah. Fucking like, have big. wood on it and shit. Like, yeah. yeah, wood I, panel. I had the density fucking... of a small black hole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And I remember, you know, I was sitting there, and we don't have it out here, but in California, there's this, uh, like, Mexican fast food chain called El Pollo Loco, right? And so they have these burritos called the BRC, bean, rice, and cheese, right? They're like a dollar menu item. They're delicious. You know, Tennessee seriously got to step up the game. Dude, El Pollo El Loco po- needs they had it, one, and they put one in Nashville West, and it lasted maybe a year. In El Pollo Loco in Nashville West? Yeah. Oh, no, shit. no. Tropic Cows. It was something else. Yeah, you're right. It Dude, was isn't it else. funny how Moss Tacos Somebody's in, weird names in like that. California? Like, I lived there for like three months, and mm-hmm. Moss Tacos has shitty tacos but really good burgers. Their burgers are amazing. You can get burgers and Moss Tacos. Yeah. What? And they're how, really good. How do I not know about this? I don't even know about. I don't know anything about that. Some dude who lived there forever was like, "Oh, you never had the burger at Moss Tacos?" Like, no, I just get the tacos. He's like, dude, you're missing out. Oh, shit. An, it's an amazing burger. Bro, I don't even know that. Yeah, anyway, continue with Anyway, you. so I'm sitting there eating my burrito, and that scene, you know, I was I was still freaked out just watching it. It's just like, oh, shit, oh, shit, what's going to happen? Like the scene with the girls, like, going back and forth on the screen, just getting – you don't see the shark. But then the following scene the next morning where we see, like, the decaying hand, like the severed hand on the beach, that part specifically freaked out that yeah. I literally dropped my burrito, made a mess, and ran to the kitchen and started weeping. As a kid, <laughs> dude, it fucked me up. My sister's like, "Oh, you bitch!" And my dad was like, "God, I raised a fucking pussy." I raised. <laughs> and then you, all right, so you remember, uh, obviously, Jurassic Park, f- another classic. And, uh, why is it that all the movies I get freaked out are Spielberg films? You know what I took away from Jurassic Park is the only thing I learned from that was if you gotta go, you gotta go. But yeah, true. If you gotta go and you go, you might. Fucking and wind up dead or eaten by a Tyrannosaurus yeah. Rex. What dinosaur do you think from that film universe would be the worst to get eaten? A raptor. Raptor for yeah, I'm gonna say raptor. Uh, that or getting trampled to death by like a Triceratops, I think it'd be pretty horrific too. I think it'd be quick though. It'd I think be quick. It would be or like if they swing that big ass tail and you get impaled by one of the spikes on it. I'm saying a, a raptor is just gonna fucking claw yeah. you and gash and you. And raptors open are smart too. They're they're sociopaths. They're gonna enjoy it. It's too. like we're talking like bobcats or something. Yeah. It's the same. Yeah. They, I feel like they have the same kind of mind. They're just yeah. like a fucking. They enjoy the hunt. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, but that that part that uh, where Newman from Seinfeld is trying to get away. That oh yeah, from that fucking blob. spit oh, thing. Oh, you're doing that I'm, scene's fucked up. Yeah. So we're, when he's like, you know, trying to rub his eyes, get the, yeah. the venom out, and he's like, oh god, where's the dinosaur? And then you see the that kind of he's kind of cute starting out. Dinosaur walk up to him, just kind of look at him inquisitively, and then when that that neck thing sprouts yeah. out and he roars, that part freaked me the fuck out too as a kid. Again, <laughs> I ran into into the kitchen. I was just like, <laughs> no. No, God, not Newman. The Sixth Sense was pretty creepy as a kid, too. Back Word. when M. M. Night Shalom, Shalom, Lama, Lama, Lama. Have you seen dead people? Yeah, see, I don't. I didn't see that one too young. So when I saw it, I was like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> "What? What else? Do you guys want to like try to like do a song before we leave? Like, oh, make, make like the uh, do our like our own little original composition as a farewell." Dude, I, yeah, maybe something like uh, 
Five Finger Death Punch is my favorite band. Five Finger Death Punch is the heaviest in the land. Everybody, Five Five Finger finger Death death Punch punch is my favorite band. band. Five Finger Death Punch is the heaviest in the land. My stepdad, Scott, he loves that band, and I love that band, too. Me, too. Hell, and Five Finger Death Punch is going to be the best for you. Everybody yeah, calls Five, Five Finger, Finger Death, Death Punch is my favorite band. band. Five Finger Death Punch is the heaviest in the land. I love my stepdad very much, and he loves Five Finger too. Uh But if you come around here, old boy, he'll put five fingers inside you. Yeah, boy, Five Five Finger finger Death Death Punch punch is my favorite band. band. Five Five Finger Death Death Punch Punch is the heaviest in the land. And then everybody hits their jewels. Everybody fucking watches some Alabama football. Oh man, God damn! Next, I, you know I don't like good. no, no sissy Next bear, but this pale ale ain't too bad. Gentlemen. This pale ale, yeah, it ain't for some. Hey, you know, some soy studio. boy, you ain't too bad. Turns out there, <laughs> huff. Well, thank you, sir. Yeah, shout out Yazoo. If you ever want to sponsor us, we've drank a lot of different, uh, really bad alcohols on this podcast. But Yazoo, you're pretty good from the hometown. You did it. You did it. This Guess is- what, Yazoo? You had an idea and you did it. You did it. This Congratulations, is Trevor McCarthy, to you. here in the studio. That was Five Finger Death Punch. Next up, we're going to have Avengers Sevenfold. They're back in the studio creating the same shitty music that they've been doing since 2002. Take it away. I'd also like to take this moment to thank our sponsors uh, Dale's Almonds Almonds. Dale's Almonds Almonds. Crunchy and sweet. They go down smooth. They come out right. Man, we got to. We we got to work hard and pay the bills, don't we, Seth? We do. Seriously, when, when you guys get some actual sponsors, yeah, I don't what know sponsors? What, what sponsors. what sponsors are you going to be most excited Ooh, I, about? I, I'd love to. I'd love to talk about that for a second. Flashlight, yeah, I feel like number brilliant. one. Flashlight, easy. flashlight would be a cool sponsor. That would be a pretty dope sponsor. <laughs> that would I mean, pretty, shit. be a pretty cool. Flashlight sponsor. sponsored Joe Rogan back in the day, and look where Joe Rogan's at now. Coincidence? I yeah, think not. That would be. That would be. Dude, fucking I would cool. love for them to send me something I had to read, like. Are you, you know what I mean? Like, you <laughs> have, a, have a, a copy? Yeah. <laughs> what they want me to say, like, here's what you got to read. I'm like, all right, sure. I'm doing, I'll do whatever the, I'll read whatever the fuck you put on here this week. Are you looking for pussy but grew up at Spencer's house? <laughs> Boy, we got the product for you. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> Fleshlight. Dude, I don't want to be sponsored by Jewel. I'm just saying, dude. I would take it. No, this- Oh uh, yeah, if Jewel the singer wants to sponsor the podcast. But all what would the product be? Are we selling Jewel? The no, singer? we're just selling ad shit. We're just going to be promoting, promoting it on Jewel? our platform. I want I want to do it for like the nonprofit foundation of saving all the jellyfish or something like that. No, yeah. the cats. Uh, you know the, the blind. The no, the blind cat sanctuary in like fucking North Carolina or wherever they take in all these blind cats and like have like a. That big seems commune. oddly specific. It is, but that's like Very something that would be perfect yeah. for us. A lot of World War II era cats that, be that also too. have polio. I was just think about it. Like, a nonprofit know? is not going to pay for a sponsorship ad, dude. Ooh, yeah, that I would be something we do gonna... out of our kindness of our hearts. Well, yeah, that'd just be one uh, freebie. No, nah, yeah, that'd be a freebie, but we're talking Save like the Fleshlight. Cats. We're talking KY. We're talking Save Trojan. The cats. We're talking, uh, we're talking Save Charmin the cats. for Huff and Brown. Yeah. Okay, dude, we could do Charmin because we'd be like, yeah, any have you kind ever of had a beer? bad time on the toilet? Yeah. And clean up, is, clean up yeah. on aisle six. And then you know right, I mean? right from there. You know what else also Charmin could be used for? <laughs> have you been masturbating the thought, God, my hand just isn't good enough? Yeah. Well, God damn it, we have the product for you. Have you ever been masturbating like, I haven't done this in three weeks. It's going to shoot all over my mom's toilet. Well, you can make yourself a little penis mummy with the Charmin. <laughs> <Yeah>. penis mummy. <laughs> Uh, or, and then they would go into our next ad and be like, are you looking to upgrade? Our next sponsor, The Fleshlight, has <laughs> an own a special compartment for you to dump your load. Penis mummy getting too mummy for you? Yeah. <laughs> Try The Fleshlight. Yeah. And then penis mummy, or Charmin, be like, what the fuck, dude? You totally fucked our ad over because 
It's our main. That's like, why dude, there's only people, one place for like, Charmin dude, stock to go, and that's people, up. People, people <laughs> still have that. to wipe their ass, dipshits. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're yeah. just promoting a, an alternative yeah. use for like, your Charmin, product. What are you mad about? Like, we're you're going to sell more toilet paper in the long run because people are going to find out there's more than one use for your toilet paper. Right. Exactly. Because people will stop pooping in their flashlights and realize they can poop in the toilet and wipe with Charmin. You can that's clean exactly your you it. can clean your ass Bro, with it. You can blow your nose on it. You can blow loads in it. Fucking multi-purpose forty chests. Yo, blow your captains nose, of industry, blow your loads. yeah. Followed by Nathan's hot dog. Yeah, <laughs> loads, commodes for chodes. You know what I mean? Are you a chode that sits on the commode and blows loads? Well, then Charmin is for you. Did you just use Why'd your you flashlight like, and then use Charmin you like to Boston clean accent? yourself up? Yeah, You're pr- you probably need some carbohydrates. Nathan hot dogs. <laughs> Nathan <laughs> hot dogs. After mass, they're kosher. <laughs> Most people get very hungry. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit I know it's I'm really glad not. I give you guys a fake name Because I do not want my future employer to <laughs> oh. see this shit <laughs> Yeah dude The mystery man Oh shit Alright oh, well d- here Let's do this Let's let's wrap her up Because I'm getting a little hungry And I think uh, our time is coming to an end We don't want to bore everybody too much I know you're sad we're, we're going I'm yeah. always sad to fucking end the cast But this is one thing do you have any final remarks before I say what I'm about to say? Just one last final remark. Yeah. I, I Will just you give us a mantra? No, that's what I'm going well, for. It's that's more what of an I apology, always ask. Public apology. I do want to apologize for everyone that it took us this long to talk about masturbation. Mm-hmm. So from the bottom of my heart, I am sorry. But, uh, I mean, if you got to whip was, it out, and jerk it. It probably, yeah. Thank if you got to whip dude. it out, jerk it. That's your mindset. Hey, yeah. Seth. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, if you got it, whip you, it out, you know, jerk it. If you haven't listened to episode three... Uh, listen to it because it's okay to jerk your dick wherever you want to, as long as you know within reason. Obviously. Within reason, you know yeah. what I mean. In, in Seth's case, it may not have been <laughs> within <laughs> reason. It might not have been that. You know yeah. what I mean? Maybe don't. Actually, really don't only maybe don't live as boldly as Seth does. There's only a handful of places you should masturbate, and I think I did it in one of them. I, I think you did, but uh, yeah, whatever. Shout out episode three of Huff and Brown. Shout uh, out to and also off. shout out to everybody that's listened to our podcast because. I, I was kind of expecting us to start doing this and having like zero views somehow, on like, everything. Have, have negative views somehow. Uh, somehow, like negative uh, two people have viewed this. Yeah, every time I post an episode, we get at least ten views, which that's not a lot. Let's be real. But within the first like few hours, yeah. I'm like, and that who who's whoever's listening to this shout out. Shout outs uh, to you. Shout outs to you. And and shout outs to us. We know who you are, so we can fucking give you shout outs back. Yeah, shout we'll shout out. If you comment on anything and you shout out to us, we'll mention you on a podcast because we're just like that. Yeah. And we'll probably say mostly good things about you, too. Yeah, probably. For the Honestly, most part, probably yeah. good things. Just like we would Dale. Right. Because we'll, he's we'll a, treat you like a, a regular swell Dale. guy. Honestly, let's just do that. There's, if you, if you give us a shout out, we'll let you come be Dale for an episode. Yeah, huh? we'll <laughs> let you be on the <laughs> podcast. For an episode, As we'll Dale. kick Dale off. If you comment on our, you know, wherever you comment at, on any of our platforms. Uh, so, yeah, shout out to hopefully Dale's replacement. Shout yeah. out to you two as well. Thanks for having me on. Oh, for sure. Obviously, shout out to the listeners. Shout oh, out to yeah. V for the beer hookups and her insightful commentary Vanessa. on all things morbid. Appreciate it. <laughs> and uh, thanks for having me on, guys. I appreciate yeah. it. This was fun. Nick. Bro. Before we totally end this thing, I want you to, everybody listening, give them your mantra. Give them some words to fucking live by. Some real life fucking advice. Don't sweat the small stuff. I know that sounds very fortune cookie cutter. Fortune fortune cookie? Fortune cookie cutter. Yeah, that for, doesn't make sense. Fortune cookie cutter. cutter. Fortune, fortune cookie cutter, yeah. Some, yeah. Sometimes you got to hear that, dude. Sometimes you yeah. just got to hear that. Can you get a round of applause for that mantra? Yeah. I'm right dude. there with you on that no, one, dude. Don't sweat Challenge. the fucking don't small stuff. Don't sweat the small stuff. I do it all the time, yeah. and it takes years off my life. Yeah. I, I just stop doing no, it. that's one thing I've struggled <clears throat> with personally for a while is uh, kind of anxiety when it comes to stuff that is, in the grand scheme of things, not all that big or stuff that is necessarily out of my control. Uh, so I'm trying to get better at not, not kind of stressing about stuff that's doesn't really need to be stressed out over. Hell yeah. Yeah, 100%. I feel that, dude. Because you can't control everything, dude. Mm-mm. All right, man. Well, thanks again for coming, dude. Gentlemen, thank you for Fucking having me. Fucking love you, dude. Fucking love you. I'm going to miss y'all when I move. Hey, safe yeah, travels, For dude. the viewers, I'm moving to Kansas City. Sorry about it. Thanks, thanks for, for listening. listening. We'll, we'll see, see you next time. time. I'm Dale Allman. There you go.
<laughs> Sweet. Oh, shit, that was, that was fun. fun.